I never went that that deep uh, and that far into the race. So hats off to Sam Long. I mean, this guy's <laughs> the progression is amazing. The guy's a hard worker. Uh, it's it's just a pleasure. <laughs> oh, it's not a pleasure during, but afterwards. And like that, 51 professional men from around the world have hit the cold waters of Sand Hollow Reservoir, and they are off DD, trying to do their best to get away from the chasers, the pursuers. We talk about Matt Russell, Sam Long, Chris Leiferman. Who else could I add to that mix that tends to have a slightly slower swim? You want to get going and get out of there because, Didi, that draft is absolutely allowed and encouraged here on the swim portion. Am I right? Well, you talk about the swim. It really is a very important part of the race, particularly on this course, because I think if you have a swimmer who isn't known to be a front pack swimmer, take a Lionel Sanders, take a Sam Long, take a Matt Hansen. If they are not in that lead pack, the tendency when they take to the bike is going to be to overbike to catch back up. But on a course like this, that can come back to, to bite you. Pacing incredibly. That Sam Appleton at the pointy end of that pack. He's got about a meter or two ahead of the Danish athlete Daniel Backegaard and the American Ben Knut. But look at that pack of men. Uh, it is still connected. You still see the athletes. They keep coming. It strings out ever so slightly. But that is a massive pack of men. So that transition is going to be a bit of chaos. I'm at 14 there at the bottom of my picture. 15 was a hand. And here we are hitting that boat ramp, coming out in uh, style here. We're going to hit right to Matt and get this live call. Matt, do your thing. Here they come, man. They are on the ramp. Get it going. You got to look good to feel good. You got to feel good to race good. And there's what she's doing right there. Our USA Haley Chura pro women's leader, Didi. And then on the left, what are you seeing over there? Riding away from that group. That's Rudy Von Berg. Yeah, that's Rudy Von Berg. And he is putting some distance between himself and that pack of men. And he is doing it early. I just, it's a, you know what I mean? We, we've had this pandemic thing. We've been off racing. So I've missed racing so much. But what I really miss is that right there, the battle, a good battle. And I got a good battle, and win or lose, it doesn't matter what side you're on when you're part of a good battle and you give it everything. It brought me to tears. I mean, it's, there's, no, <laughs> there's no greater feeling than a good battle. Okay, so was Lionel trolling us a little bit? I'm not really sure and it's hard to tell because unless you're there on the day and you're comparing apples to apples instead of apples to oranges, it's really tough to know exactly what's going on. But I did a little bit of stalking on the previous race result and it just doesn't, it just doesn't seem quite right. Lionel seemed well in control of the race uh, the whole time. And despite him grunting and resorting back to his lope or run gate or whatever you want to call it, he still looked like he was in control and pulled away from Sam Long right at the end. He's always going to do that little kind of, oh, that was really tough at the end and great battle, this, that and the other. But at the end of the day, when you look back at all the results and you compare them to one another. He actually underrode in comparison to the previous years. And yes, his run was really good. And if you and if you compare it to Alistair's run in 2017, I think it was, it was another three minutes faster than that. So yeah, like really good. But then you look at the bike, and it was about a minute or minute and a half slower than what he's done before. So it's tough to tell exactly, but I just think that there's a lot more in Lionel than what we saw on the weekend. And, shock, Lionel didn't lose the race on his swim. If you look at the times, Lionel actually swam faster than Sam, biked slower, and ran exactly the same. So, all in all, he won the race by 5 seconds, but his swim was about 20 seconds faster than Sam's. Like. 
only just beating Sam, meaning that it could have been the swim that allowed him to win the whole race. I mean, I don't think that's quite the case. I think, like, like I said, I think he had a little bit in reserve on the run, but what we are seeing from Lionel is really good control, race control, race craft, actually racing things rather than just going hell for leather on the bike. Take everything with a pinch of salt, but really good racing. Love to see the battle. It put a smile on my face. Hopefully it did everyone else's. I just got that feeling that there was something left on the table that could have been used, which is good. I mean, you wouldn't want your competitors to know that you can run X time so that they have to aim for that in the future. Like that's the kind of thing or ability that you want to be able to have to hold things back so that you don't egg people on to be even better. So that was the men's race. It was a really good battle between, I think it was Sam Long, uh, Lionel Sanders, Magnus Dietlev, finally finishing a race in a good form and podiuming. Like, about time. <laughs> he's uh, He's been tapping on the door for a good few races now and it's good to see him on the podium, like super biking and level above everyone else on the bike I think at the moment. And then on the women's side of things we saw Daniela Reef do the tri sato shuffle and uh, dominate the race all the way from start to finish pretty much. I mean I don't think she was out of the water first but she did bike off the front and then ran a great split to finish with ease I'd say. Again, probably a lot left uh, on the table ready for her to lay it down next time. It's just my personal opinions, uh, take them for what they are, but leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if you want to see more of this kind of content, my thoughts and opinions and race highlights and my day to day. This week's been tough. Uh, again, trying to recover off the back of last week for me and just, uh, yeah, getting ready to race in a couple of weeks time now, but I feel as though I definitely need to freshen up. Tune in next time. I think racing is coming thick and fast, so hope to see you uh, later this week. Last question. You ready for 70.3 Worlds here in just a few months? I think I need a couple of months to, uh, to, to get my mind ready to go that deep again, but, but yeah, this is going to be a great course for 70.3 Worlds. Well, there you go, everybody. Your Ironman North America 70.3 champion, Lionel Sanders.